there's always something that needs a little fixing on Bar Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms Restorations and Repairs. Today we'll be doing an oil change on the 2001 Volvo Cross Country that I have here. But this job is going to be the same from 99 all the way through to 2007. You're going to need a few things. Most of these you better know you need if you're going to do an oil change. You got to have like this is a spin-on cartridge type filter. So we're going to need that and it does come with an O-ring. You want to use it. Man is the original manufacturer for the Volvo oil filters, so I recommend going with that. There are two other things I recommend. They're not necessary, but they're probably not a bad idea to replace at the same time. This right here is our aluminum uh, drain washer. So when we take our drain plug out, there's a crush washer that's behind it. That's this. You can get away with reusing them once or twice, but that's not a great idea. And lastly, if it's been more than maybe 10,000 miles, this is our oil cap gasket. And a lot of times, oil leaks get misdiagnosed as being bad flame trap boxes or hoses or um, even uh, valve cover, or in this case, rocker box leaks, when it's just as simple as a you know, $2 washer, $2 O-ring there. So I'm going to be replacing that. You will need uh, the Volvo. This is the V410 from AST. That's to get that Volvo cartridge filter out of there, and that takes a uh, 7 8 or 22 millimeter to get that loose. So I've got that here. And the actual drain plug is a 17. I've got a 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench. You don't need that. And of course, we're going to need oil. This car, if it's a turbo, it's going to take six and a half quarts. If it's a non-turbo, it takes six quarts. And as far as the type, well, that depends. My car has a lot of miles on it and is in very poor shape. So I use a much thicker oil than is called for from the factory. I believe from the factory these calls for 530. The turbos may have been 1030. It's been so many years since I actually bothered to check. I just don't remember. So look that up yourself, my friends. But let's go ahead and take a look at the engine. I'll show you what I do here up on top before we move the car under and do the draining. Now, I'm gonna be using a lift, but there is nothing that I'm gonna be doing here today in this video that requires the use of a lift. So you can easily do this with a drain pan and uh, do it on the ground. I do think you'd have to jack it up and put it on jack stands to get enough clearance to get to some of this stuff. Or ramps. I used to do oil changes a lot using drive-on ramps. All right, here we are at the engine, and the very first thing I'm gonna do is remove my cap and remove my washer. I'll replace that washer with a fresh one. All right, and I'm going to lay it down on top. I'm not going to screw it back on. I'm just laying it down on top. That's going to let a little airflow in in order to make sure that the uh, oil drains out quickly and efficiently. The second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pull up my oil dipstick just a bit. Again, that's going to allow air to get in there and allow more of the oil to drain out quicker. This gasket, it's still flexible but it's awfully hard. It doesn't have any of the flexibility that the original had. It kind of wants to stay in whatever shape you put it. And so, yeah, you can see. So it's, it's been a perfect time to do it. A lot of times you'll try to pull these off and they'll just straight crack and break off. So this one definitely needed to be done. All right, let's put the car up in the air and we will drain the oil out. We're underneath the car and there is our cartridge. And here, right here, is our oil drain plug so there's no particular order i always just seem to drain the oil first but you could do the filter first it really doesn't matter on these i'm going to go ahead and break that loose um, this one uh, the uh, drain plug was a little stripped out so i switched from a ratcheting wrench to a actual ratchet with a six point six point is going to give you a little more grip than 12 point and this one looked like it could use all the help it could get and hopefully you can see it here but i'm just going to pull that out now it's a good idea to run the engine for a few minutes if you haven't already to warm it up. I did do that with this car and we're ready to just let it drain out. I've got no rush, so I'll let it drain until, until it's done. There we go. And that is some ugly looking oil. It is actually only 4,500 miles old. This engine has a ton of blow by, so it wears out that oil pretty quickly. And while that's draining, there is our washer. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew that washer there. And you'll see when I get it off, it's pretty worn. You can see it's dish shaped and it's been crushed more than once. So that's trash. We'll replace that with a new one. Nice new washer. Great. Once she's had a chance to drain, we'll go ahead and put our drain plug back in it. Tighten that back down with our new crush washer.
and we're ready to take off our canister. This part's a little messier and there's just no way around it. It's just the design that the Volvo engineers thought was, was good. I'm going to go ahead and slide that on there firmly and away we go. Once we get it started, usually it's no big deal to do it the rest by hand. I'll go ahead and loosen it. And when it comes free, it will start to drain out of there pretty nasty. I'm going to go ahead and pull that old filter out of there. There we are. Ugh. Yeah, that's pretty bad. And I'm going to let that drain a little bit too. All right, to get the old O-ring off of this, first of all, I would like to say, and it's kind of impossible to see in there, if there's crud sitting down in there, take a rag and wipe all that out of there. It's not unusual for it to accumulate in that area right there. So you want to make sure that that's clean before we put our new filter in. The filter, don't throw that right in the trash either. Let that drain for a while because that's just putting oil into the, uh, into the ecosystem. We don't want to do that. But before reinstalling this, we've got to get that old o-ring off you can see it right there i'm going to take my rag so i can get better traction here that's going to be hard to show it to you and i'm going to pinch it when i pinch it i can get my finger under it and i can roll that old o-ring off it's going to be a little bit more stiff than the new one but there it is you'll also notice i'm going to get this up close the o-ring doesn't go all the way on the bottom here it actually goes just let me get the light in there it actually goes right a little bit above it. There's a fatter slot for it right there. You want to put that on. If you push it all the way down, it'll fail. It'll leak. And it'll push out an awful lot of oil very quickly. So you can really damage a car in a hurry while trying to do the right thing. I use my fingers. We already have a little oil on there. And use that to put a little oil around our new O-ring. We'll take our new oil filter. Slide it in there. We're ready to go back in. I'm just going to wipe that out a little bit. There we go. I'm ready to screw, screw it back in there. I can't tell you how many times as <laughs> working at the dealership that, uh, that these things walked away. Yeah, you get in a hurry and you forget to take them loose once they're back on. And so 5,000 miles later, you might get lucky and the customer comes back to the shop <laughs> and you get your oil filter wrench back or your, your socket back, but more often than not, you don't. Okay, you're going to tighten that up until it's just finger tight. You're not going crazy with that. It'll actually break the plastic. But once it's on there, you got to kind of wiggle it to get it loose. Sometimes you have to tap it a little bit. There we go. Get that off of there. We're ready to lower this thing down and put oil back in it already. All right. Here we are back up top. We've got our cap loose. And uh, on this car, because it's so old, I do use Marvel Mr. Oil. So I'm going to add a little bit of that before I put my oil in there. That Marvel helps with lifters and helps keep the rings from sticking. Okay, we're ready to put oil in it. I'm going to do that. It is six and a half quarts. There we are. There's six and a half quarts. We'll put a little bit of oil onto my new gasket here. And we're ready to put that back on. Clean up any spillage. And we're gonna put our dipstick back in there. It might be a little out of view, but I wanna push that back down. Next thing to do, run the car for about 30 seconds, shut it off and check for leaks. Let's do it. All right, after checking for leaks, the last thing to do before pushing this thing out the door is to double check the oil level is correct. I'm gonna wipe the dipstick off, stick it back in there and check it. And look at that, right to the fill line. So that's it. That's how to change the oil on any 99 through 2007 Volvo. The 98 and earlier, 98 to like 93 model, 850s and S70s, they had a spin on oil filter, but honestly, that's the only difference in the job. It's very straightforward, very easy. Filter, uh, gaskets, and uh, oil all cost me less than $25, so cheaper than anything you can do in town, and you get the 
pleasure of knowing that you did the job right, which is not always the case when you have somebody do it in town. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm Eric, the owner of Farpoint Farms Restorations and Repairs. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you will like and subscribe because well, this is where I am now, and I hope you'll follow along on this whole new journey. Take care.